So uh, basically, I'm just going to give you guys, you know, a quick, uh, quick tour uh, of some of the equipment we use here. Uh, right here, you see that we have uh, we have an aerator, which uh, it's it's very versatile in the different different times we can use. So something like this is a deep time. Uh, so you can see it goes, you know, as far as like uh, eight to ten inches. Uh, normally, we probably keep around six to six to eight, I uh, don't want to go too deep. Uh, here's a, the same type, you know, it's a needle time, you know, it's not as aggressive, doesn't make as big holes, so th this I like to use more often just because we can, uh, we can aerate with this and then also be able to play immediately right after. So something like this, you know, it would take a few days for it to heal up, you know, and it, uh, something like this size would also make the ground very soft, so players would easily be able to trip. So I go, I go to more of a, a needle time, which is, a, is much preferable for, for quick play. Uh, this right here is a pour, pouring time, which goes into the ground and brings the plug right back up. So this would be something I would use in a window where I have two weeks of no events. Um, so this is this obviously takes more of the recovery process, um, but very beneficial to the grass. You know, it pulls up old, old soil, kind of uh, revives and rejuvenates the grass. Um, so this is actually more beneficial, but very very tricky in, in timing wise. You gotta have the right amount of time. Uh, usually after any kind of aerification, uh, we use a. Uh, we use our, our, our drop seeder, which uh, you can't see, it has a roller with uh, some spikers that push the seed into the ground. Um, this, you know, we, uh, we're able to, to set at a different amount, different, different rates. Uh, usually, uh, uh, seeding, it, uh, it, it varies at times and, and amounts, depending on events, depending on the schedule. So. Uh, but you know, really, you can't put too much seed. Uh, more seed, the better, uh, which helps us with, uh, with wear areas uh, down the middle of the field or, or any issues we have uh, with bare spots. So this is our seeder. Um, this little machine here is, uh, is, is our brand new toy we, we got from, uh, from England. It's a wheel-to-wheel -wheel painter, which is very simplistic. Pour liquid paint into the hopper, and uh, it just rolls paint right onto the grass, which uh, is, is pretty, uh, it's pretty, I guess, uh, it's, it's more beneficial for us to have this kind of painter where, where the paint is being on, it, it being pressed onto the to the grass plate is whereas you have a, a pressurized painter that pushes paint into the grass and through the soil. So this kind of uh, painter is actually more preferred. Uh, some of the other equipment I have here. This is our top dresser. So usually following a uh, following aerification seating, I like to uh, to put some. Uh, uh, a uh, blanket of sand down, so sand goes into the hopper, uh, and then in the back we have blades that fan it out. It broadcasts broadcasts the sand out evenly, which the sand is, is used for uh, for a nice protective coating over the seed, and then also brings in new new sand into the profile way of the aerification holes. Uh, top dressing is is. Is not as frequent as I would like because it does uh, create disturbance on on, on on the surface for 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 soccer. So we try to, we try to time this as well uh, around certain events, around opening windows, open windows that we have uh, in our schedule. Just to interject. How often uh, do you do coordination versus how? I know you mentioned that you do it as frequently as possible. The uh, overseeding uh, and then uh, for the top floor. So, aerification, 
the, the, the amount of verification we do, it, it all depends on our schedule. And our schedule is, uh, you know, it always changes. Um, we have our set soccer schedule that we know throughout the year, but our outside events kind of, you know, will dictate when we can do verification. Uh, so if I see an open window of two weeks, I guess maybe more 10 to, 10 to 14 days, I will do a core iteration, which uh, probably throughout a year, I probably get four to five times, if I'm lucky, uh, core iteration, uh, deep timing and solid time, uh, needle timing. That's done on a more frequent basis, so I could probably get uh, two to three times a month where I can get a solid time application. So the more frequent I can, the more I will. And if I could, if I could solid time, I would do it once a week. Uh, but that's all dictated on the schedule. Um, here, this is our, our pro sweep. Uh, basically, this machine will pick up uh, any of the cores through, through aeration um, to, to clean up all the debris that we have on the field. Uh, it's a very, very good machine to, to have clean surface. And on top of the sweeper, uh, we also have our, our, uh, our turbine blower, which we also take across the field to blow off, blow off all the debris on the surface, which for soccer, uh, very vital to have a clean clean surface for ball rolling. Um, onto our uh, our real mower. Um, a real mower is, is basically uh, a mower that cuts like scissors, um, as opposed to a rotor mower, which are which is mainly used on, on a home lawn. Uh, a real mower cutting it like a scissor, it, it gives the blade a, a cleaner cut. It leaves the surface much much smoother, as opposed to a rotary where it kind of does a choppy motion, leaving leaving the grass a little more uh, uh, stringy. Uh, and also another benefit to this is leaving a clean cut grass also will leave a better appearance, uh, a, a healthier plant. Uh, so something like this is, is very vital to, uh, to a plain surface with, with high standards. Um, as you can see, we have uh, buckets on these. Um, we try to catch clippings as much as we can. Um, sometimes it's, it can be, uh, it can be a, a, an extreme having to catch so much, um, so we have to time it, time it well. Um, Leaving the clippings on the grass, it, it creates it creates a thatch layer where all the dead grass will, will create a layer. And having that layer, it's it's it's, uh, it's not it doesn't add any benefit to to water and to fertilizing. So catching clippings will help minimize the thatch layer and uh, and also leave a, a, a cleaner surface. How often do you uh, mow the lawn per week, and what type of height do you try to keep the grass at? Um, well, that's all also dictated by our schedule. So let's say, for instance, we have a game on a Saturday. So from Monday to Saturday, we'll, we'll be mowing every day um, for, for many reasons. One, um, we want to, to make sure that the, the grass is at the perfect height. Uh, we usually keep our grass at one inch for a soccer game. Um, and then also aesthetically, you know, we want to get a pattern in that uh, that also looks uh, pleasing um, to spectators and, and to TV audience. So leading up to a game is usually every day. Um, on, a, on a week where we, we don't have an event, I'll, I'll like to try to give the field as much as a break as possible. So we might do like every other day or every two days. Um, and then to to get you know the, the healthiest plant possible that we're, we're striving for, um, we have our, our, our fertilizing. So we have our, our, our sprayer here, um, which we use to, for, for liquid fertilizers and uh, any other kind of uh, pesticides that uh, that we feel necessary. Uh, and then also 
when we uh, spread fertilizer granular, we will use uh, we'll use something like this that that's more precise and more accurate. And the types of fertilizers, you know, it, it, it will vary from time to time um, with weather um, and the heat. So um, having knowledge with fertilizers is, is uh, very very key, and, and knowing when to pull the trigger.